Hey everyone, and welcome to the final episode of our 1.19 Minecraft Fairy Core Let's Play series. This series has been the longest running one on the channel, learned a whole lot about the game, and developed my own build style, so I've had a lot of fun here. It's always sad to come to an end, but I'm excited to show you the very cute, cozy fantasy castle that we'll be building today. There have been a lot of changes in this world since we were last here. I'm going to be walking you through it later, and I also did a cozy, just no voice walkthrough video earlier, so you've already gotten a chance to look at it. So for now, we'll take this peek and then we'll come back to it at the end of the video. I added this pathway here, which connects to our main pathway and kind of goes around the yard of this, what was originally going to be house, but I'm thinking it'd be really cute if we made this a sort of museum with different exhibits based around what we did in each episode of the series. And up here we have where we're going to be building our keep. I already made a layout with wool, so we'll be filling that in with stone bricks soon. But first, let's get a look at what the current plan is. A quick look over at our village and this beautiful field that took a long time to plant. Over there we've got a small little caravan area, but we'll be taking a closer look at that later on. So for the layout, I've always been a huge fan of the corner towers with some sort of main central structure for castles. This one is definitely built with that in mind. I wanted something a little grander than I normally build, but still within my scope of coziness. Okay, I can't help it. Look at this really cute pond. Back here, I did add an underground entrance to the castle. That leads over to our underground storage area. And this will come out somewhere in a courtyard, I'm thinking. But let's get to filling this outline in. Once I got the basic shape filled in, it was time to figure out my levels. I knew I wanted the center part to be one of the highest areas, at least of the main buildings and not the towers. I'm thinking somewhere between three to five layers of the stone brick foundation. I did run out of stone bricks, so we're gonna run back to the workshop, grab our stone cutter, and bring it back to where we're working. I'm honestly so proud of this village. This area came together so beautifully. I think it's definitely the best village that I've made so far. My 1.171 with a very similar color scheme was a little bit too spread out. I didn't have enough decorations everywhere. And my first fairy core village with the rounder roofs, I think was just, there's nothing really wrong with it, but it was definitely pretty small. This is when I remember that you need stone to make stone bricks and not cobblestone, so we're gonna go cook this down in the storage room. I figured this mine track would be faster than running back and forth, but this system needs some work. So 
So I added some levels to a few of the different buildings and now I'm adding in the log framing. I wanted this to have a very similar sort of feel and design to the rest of the village, so it does give this sense of it all being one place built together. When I'm building these kinds of things, I try to think of the flow of energy, the, the flow of history, so what would have come first? In this case, I'm thinking it may have been the village by the river, and everything else just sort of got bigger and bigger around it as more people came, more commerce, and the community around the village grew. So for a few changes, I moved the entrance to the underground tunnel from this courtyard into the main building since that's just going to be the bottom story. I also built up the walls and added in a bunch of different types of stone to add some texture and variation. We're also starting to get a firmer sense of buildings here, and I'm trying to keep in mind the flow of traffic for how to get to each different part of the castle. And now it's time to add in the calcite. I'm always trying to find ways to add in variation when I'm making these sort of builds. I fail because I end up leaning on the same building and roof shape a lot. For this one, I wanted this to be one of the taller structures as far as the actual calcite part goes. I thought that I originally wanted this to have just a basic A-frame shape. And then I, I quickly realized I didn't actually like that. I ended up moving it to the same type that we have on the main player house. Now it's time to vary the texture of the buildings by using dripstone instead of calcite. If you're building on vanilla and you want to do something similar to this, I probably would not recommend dripstone. The texture looks way different in vanilla than it does in Mizuno's. But for these purposes, I think it's really pretty with the gray. For the towers, I was originally just going to leave them the flat top with the parapets, but I ended up deciding to add a building to the top. I decided to take a quick break from building because my elytra was running low and I definitely didn't want that to break which meant we'd be spending the night in our XP generator. Let's see what we have built so far. I ended up getting the building on the second story done for the main section, as well as adding in polished diorite to the calcite. And then I went off to grab some water so I could create a small infinite water source on that second story of the castle to use for a neat little detail I thought of. I thought it would look really cool if we surrounded this building in waterlogged stairs, so I'm going to make an infinite water source here and get to work filling those in. We're going to ignore the fact that I can't count.
I definitely recommend filling in every other stair because that'll fill in the ones next to it instead of every single stair. I figure that out later. Next I added in the windows. For this I used a lot of purple stained glass as well as light blue stained glass and cyan stained glass. I adore the window textures in Mizuno's, especially for these kinds of builds. It really has that nice medieval quality to it. Finally, it was time to get started on the roofs. As always, I'll be beginning with the actual frame of the roof in deep slate tiles. And then we'll move on to the gradients. Alrighty, we have the main roofs done, and it is now time to think about the tower tops. I've mentioned it before, but I struggle with these a lot. I'm never really happy, and usually feel like they come out way too round looking. But we'll see if I make something here that we enjoy. Another thing for my vanilla builders, netherrack has a much more red look to it than purple in vanilla, so I might switch that out for a different block if you want to do a purple gradient. I don't think I'll ever get over how pretty amethysts look and sound. And it's... it's okay. I'm not in love with it yet, but... A little more tweaking and we'll get there. And this is what we ended up with. I'm reasonably satisfied for now and ready to move on to the next part of the build. Campfires make the perfect roof for this area because it still feels open to the elements but covered and protected. And it kind of gives the idea that it's like timber framing covering the courtyard. I also just really love using campfires as roofs and flooring. Later on when I begin detailing, I'll definitely be mixing in leaves for this area so it has a lot more natural cottage y vibes. Even though I recognize this is very much not cottage core, we are in a fantasy build mode right now. I did add a stained glass roof to this building because I thought that would look really cool. You technically can get across this way, though I wouldn't count this as a official pathway.
and here's that mini walkway I was talking about before. To make this match the other pathways better, I am going to replace this line with chiseled stone blocks, but I forgot to grab them. I'm using acacia fencing so it can match with the rest of the village and stone brick walls to blend it in with the castle just a little bit better. I'm going to fence this in so it's not easy to fall from the other sides. And finally finish off that pathway. This is all of the building that I plan to do on video, but once I add in more detail and finish the castle, I will make a tour of it later on. For those of you who do want it, this world will be available once I'm done adding my final decorations, and I'll probably leave it free on my Ko-Fi for like a month, honestly, as a thank you to everyone who stuck with the series for so long. And here's our final castle. So far. I'm honestly really, really proud of myself. I don't really like doing larger things like this in survival, so this was fun. It was a challenge. I definitely fell a lot, as everyone who's seen my channel for a while knows. I have, I have terrible aim, and I'm very bad with the elytra. But yeah, here's what it looks like from the side. I tried to make sure we had a bunch of different levels going on, different mixtures in the textures of the different buildings, different roof sizes, just a lot of interesting, unique things to look at. I still don't know what I want to do with all of the different rooms yet, but let's take a quick peek inside. So first, we do have a one block wide walkway through all of the towers. In here, we have that entrance down into the tunnel, and I'm thinking I'm going to make the rest of this some sort of trophy room. That still exits out by the workshop, and that leads down into our storage room. Over here, it's a very open area, and I'm still really not sure what I want to do with it. Definitely thinking some decorations barrels, little workshop areas. I don't know what I want this room to be yet, but this is the bottom section of one of the towers. And I'm thinking back in here, since it is more enclosed and sectioned off, maybe some sort of living quarters. I know in my old castle I made the towers like the brewing and enchanting and nether portal, but we have those all separately, so I don't know if I'll be adding them into here or using this as more just big decorative ideas. In here I'm planning a fairly large workshop area that might be two stories. This I have no idea what I want to do with. Here we have another tower. In here, I was originally thinking some sort of, like, deep storage. When I first made this larger than the other towers, I was thinking, like, an open sort of patio situation, but now that it's enclosed, I'm not really sure what I want to do. I definitely need to add some windows to the tower sides themselves. And again, this isn't this isn't really a walkway, but you can walk across it. I 
I'm thinking I'm actually going to leave the scaffolding in the castle. It gives a sort of feel of it being under construction even once it's quote finished, which makes it feel more lived in and just adds a bit more story. For this room, I'm thinking either some sort of chapel situation or maybe like a lecture hall. It could also be like a huge player room. Back here, we'll do some sort of royal garden situation. And over here, I'm thinking a secondary marketplace with a bit fancier buildings and stalls. And yeah, that's our castle. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.